Okay, welcome everybody to a class on participles. <clears throat> now, I really want to explain what a participle is today. And it's very easy to mix up a participle with a finite verb. And this is partly because of the way different grammar guides use different terms, um, quite often inconsistently. You know, one grammar guide uses the word participle to only refer to a non-finite verb form, and other ones use the word participle to refer to finite verb forms as well. <clears throat> and so it can get a little bit confusing. But for the sake of this course, I want you to remember that participle is a non-finite verb form, or I will always use the word participle to refer to non-finite verbs, and I'll use the word verb to refer to finite verbs. For me, a verb always has a doer, yeah? And, and I think that that's the best way to understand a finite verb. It's, some, it's a word that has a doer, whereas a participle does not have a doer. It describes a noun, but it does not have a doer. And so we're going to find out what a participle is by looking at what a participle isn't. So what... <laughs> What is a, so what isn't a participle? Let's have a look, first of all, at some examples that we have already seen on this course. We have already seen the following example. The boy called Simon, told him the news and asked for help. Now, what is that? Is it, you know, at the moment, I would argue the way it's punctuated at the moment, we are saying that the boy called Simon did two things. The boy called Simon told him the news and asked for help. Yeah, that's what it means when you don't have any commas in it. But if we do this, the boy called Simon. Yeah, maybe he gave him a call. Maybe he rang him. He phoned him. The boy called Simon, told him the news and asked for help. Now, I would put another comma in here for the, the Oxford comma. That one's called the Oxford comma, but they use it in the US and in Australia and in Canada as well. And in most books, I see that comma there. And it's the comma before the fanboy's word in a list. Yeah, we've seen this already on this course. And so it's really important to know what kind of word is called. Because if it's a participle, that means that this part is describing the boy and it's not an action. It's not what the boy did. Yeah, it means the boy, it, his name is Simon. The boy called Simon. Yeah, the boy who was called Simon. That's what that means if it's a participle. And if it's a participle, we definitely need to remove the commas because we're saying the boy, Simon, did two things. He told him the news and asked for help. So I, what you can see here, what I'm trying to show you is that a participle is completely different from a finite verb. And if this word is a participle, we use no commas. And there's only two things that Simon did. He told and he asked. But if this word is not a participle, if this word is a finite verb with a doer, that means that the boy, whose name was probably Peter or Jeff or Jeremy or whatever, the boy did three things. Jeremy, let's call him Jeremy. He did three things. He rang Simon, he told him the news and he asked for help. And if that's the case, we need these commas in there to show that we've got a list of finite verbs. Yeah, finite verb phrases. And that's what the commas show us. So have a look at these two as well, because I think a lot of people, when they first start doing parts of speech, they think, OK, made is verb, made is verb, end of story. No, unfortunately not. Look at these two. Well, one is a sentence and one is a phrase, a noun phrase. I made a cake. That's made as a finite verb. And I want you to notice that something happened there. You did something. You made a cake. Yeah. And so the made is functioning as a finite verb because it's got a doer. Compare it with the next one. Cars made in Japan. Yeah. What did the cars made in Japan do? We don't know yet because this made in Japan is describing the car, just like called Simon described the boy. This made in Japan is describing the cars and it's a participle. The cars didn't make anything. And in this one, I made something. Yeah, but here the cars didn't make anything. So you can see that this is a very different type of made than the first made because 
Something happened here, you did something, nothing happened here. Cars made in Japan is just a noun phrase. Just like the boy called Simon, if that's his name, the boy called Simon is a noun phrase. It's not the same as the boy phoned Simon, the boy rang Simon, which it could be, you know, it could be, you could say the boy rang Simon, the boy called Simon full stop. But this word could be a participle, it could be a finite verb. Same with this one, yeah, that's what I'm trying to show you. Okay, so you've got that complication with is it a participle or is it a finite verb? And you'll have to look at it and you'll have to decide, does the word have a doer or not? That's what you've got to do to decide, is it, is it a participle describing the boy or is it what the boy actually did? Okay, so you've got that complication. And as if that weren't enough, you've got a second complication, participle or gerund. Now, both of these forms are non-finite verbs, but participle means verb functioning as an adjective, yeah? Here, called Simon describes the boy. Made in Japan describes the cars. And that's why we say that participle is a verb functioning as an adjective. Gerund, which looks exactly the same, sorry, it looks exactly the same as participle because they both end in ing. And I must admit, not all participles end in ing, but many of them do. Yeah, Running, playing, walking, smoking, drinking. Um, the gerund forms look exactly the same. So gerund is the verb functioning as a noun. Participle is the verb functioning as an adjective.